Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Jennifer Huber, also known as Solo Travel Girl, and since June of 2022, I've been taking Manjaro to manage my type 2 diabetes. Now, what you can see is the weight loss if you've been following my videos, but what you cannot see is how Manjaro has improved me internally. It's lowered my A1C, it's lowered my blood pressure, it has reversed my non-alcoholic fatty liver's disease. It really has been a game changer medication. So before I get into this week's update, I just wanna remind you that I am not a healthcare professional and I'm just sharing my personal opinions and experience about, about using Monjaro to manage my type two diabetes. Also, I don't have any type of relationship with a drug manufacturer. All right, so I just finished up week 36 and week 20 at the 10 milligram dose and I'm feeling good. Um, I did one, lose one pound, which I gained back and I've lost. So I'm at 130 pounds, making my total weight loss well over 50 pounds, close to 60 pounds. And that's pretty, pretty amazing. Um, I guess I'm going to be jumping ahead here because someone recently asked, Hey, David, David asked this question of what's going to happen next because it seems like my weight loss has plateaued so what am I going to do with these videos and um, I met with my doctor this week and she's she agreed that yes I have plateaued and she doesn't want me losing any more weight um, I do want to let you know who that doctor is I know some of you have asked before and I've been a little elusive just because of people's privacy whatever but um, my doctor is Dr. Madera in Port Charlotte, Florida for the Millennium Physicians Group. And she's an endocrinologist. And it, it's funny because I also have a friend who goes to her and I didn't realize that she was going to her. My friend is also type two diabetic. Um, and just one day we were talking about how much we loved our endocrinologist and we realized it was the same doctor. Now, Dr. Madera is not going to prescribe something that is not right to you. She will not prescribe Manjaro to my friend because she knows it's not right for her. So if you do choose to reach out to Dr. Madera, um, you know what, she's gonna to work with you. She's gonna look at your history and all that and see if Manjaro is good for you. I just wanna throw that out there. Um, but into what's next and talking about the weight loss. Um, I don't know if any of you are Dr. Phil fans. If you are, it's okay. There's no judging. You know, I spend my Friday nights watching Love After Lockup, Life After Lockup, Life In Lockup. So yeah, it's like the People Magazine version of TV. But um, a friend pinged me and said that she saw me on Dr. Phil this past week. And I'm like, what? So apparently when I gave my rights to the CBS Evening News to use my um, YouTube videos and to use my interview, I gave them perpetual rights for whatever. So the Dr. Phil show had an episode this past week about dangerous diet crazies, crazes, dangerous diet crazes. And um, I did find the episode. And so basically they had some guy who eats raw meat just not raw seafood like raw sushi. He'll eat raw hamburger and beef and other things. And then they had these two women who were taking, pretty sure it was Manjaro, and they ended up in the hospital. Now, so my interview with the CBS Evening News was used as a teaser into this segment about these women using Manjaro off label. They were not diabetic, using it for weight loss, and they ended up in the hospital. And, you know, Dr. Phil, that's a shtick. He's all about sensationalism, but it really ticked me off because, you can tell I'm getting a little riled up here. It ticked me off because they cut out the part that, of the interview that states I'm using this to manage my type two diabetes. I'm not using this for weight loss. As I've said over and over before in these videos, the weight loss is what you can see, but what you cannot see is what this medication has been doing for me inside. So, you know, I've been thinking about, well, what's next? I don't know if I'm gonna let you know or share how much weight I have lost on a consistent basis. I do wanna make these videos at least for, um, until I finished a year on Manjaro. 
So that'll be, I guess, the end of June, beginning of July, that I'll continue these regular weekly videos. But what's next? I'm not sure. I need to, need to really think about that. But, and then it kind of irked me that Dr. Phil didn't even give me credit. I mean, they did say my name, Jennifer Huber, because that was in the CBS um, evening news story. But anyway, so if you saw me on Dr. Phil, I did not know about that. And I'm sure my videos have been shown elsewhere that I don't know. Um, I do have Google alerts set up, so I'm notified when my name is in the news or elsewhere on the interwebs. Uh, but Google alerts doesn't necessarily pick up everything with my name. So I could be missing things or people could just be using my videos, which I'm sure without tagging me or using my name. And you know what, that's just the way the world is and society is. Life is too short to get too worked up to chase down people, but you know, it's always nice to be credit. Just be a good human. Don't steal other people's content or stuff. All right, sorry about my rant. So yeah, so I did lose a pound. I'm not here for the weight loss. Now that I have lost the weight, yeah, it's it's pretty nice. I'll admit that. But I'm here for what it's doing for me inside and sharing this experience with you. So my glucose levels have been basically in the 90s and the low 100s. Exercise, I'm getting back to my walking. I did a lot of yard work today. A lot of yard work and it's getting hot in Florida. I don't know what time or how hot it is right now, but it's hot. It's probably in the upper 80s. It was already like 74 when I rolled out of bed this morning. Um, I've been working six days a week for the past four weeks and I like to have one day a week where I can just sleep in and be a slug. Yesterday, Saturday was not that day. Um, I had to take my dog to the vet early in the morning, but I was just so tired yesterday afternoon. And I don't know if that's because of the medication or if it's just because I've been, I've had like three, 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 three wake up calls because I had to catch a flight earlier in the week and just late nights, early mornings. And I think it just catches up with me at the end of the week. I don't know if it's something to do with the Manjaro, but um, I was just so tired yesterday that after I took my dog to the vet yesterday morning and he's fine. He just has ear infections. I feel like a bad dog mom because he gets these ear infections a lot and I don't properly clean them, but I will clean them this time. I have all the goods for it now. But anyway, I just turned on Lifetime to what has some cheesy Lifetime movies in the background. And I probably took a nap for about four hours yesterday. My body just needed it. I feel really good this morning. Um, tomorrow will be my Manjaro injection day. And I don't necessarily feel tired after taking the Manjaro injection. And that could just be because I've been on the you know, 10 milligrams for 20 weeks now. So I think my body is just adjusted to that. So I don't really have the side effects. I do have the back pain, the lower back pain. Um, so I just need to get back to doing my Pilates, my Pio, my yoga and all that other good stuff. And then continue up, uh, with the strength training. All right, nutrition, I've been good. Um, I did have a conference earlier in the week, so Kind of held captive, held captive with the conference food, but I did stop at Walmart before getting to my hotel, picked up some yogurt and some grapes. So I did have that. Um, I had yogurt one day for breakfast. I did eat off the buffet one day for breakfast. And they had something really interesting. They had a bowl of blueberries in maple syrup with chopped mint on top of it. And it was actually quite lovely. It was a little strange, but I thought maybe it was supposed to go on the pancakes or something, but I just ate it as is. So it gave me an idea when I go blueberry picking sometime this month, I couldn't make it this week, but sometime this month, it'll give me another option of what to do with my blueberries. So, um, yeah, so I've just been mindful of what I've been, been eating, um, staving off those temptations. So yes, I met with my endocrinologist this week. I had an update with her and she, she called me her model patient. Um, and that's because I've been just keeping up to date, um, being very proactive in my health on this journey and knowing when I need to go up to another dose. Um, you know, I mentioned before that I've had um, imposter syndrome, like, did I really earn this? And after my appointment with her, yes, I did earn this because not all of her patients are having this success because I am watching what I'm eating, I am actively exercising, and I'm just staying on top of my numbers and staying on top of if I need to go up a dose and all that. 
So I'm taking ownership of that that this is not all Manjaro, it's Mar Manjaro in partnership with me, right? That's been making me healthier. So yeah, Dr. Madeira, and this is a photo of Dr. Madeira and I, and I almost cried. <laughs> I'm gonna cry now just because if I never went, I don't think I would be here today. I don't think I would be the healthier person. And um, she took me off another medication. She took me off my blood pressure medi medication, my lisinopril. So I am no longer taking that. Now I know that's a, a good medication for diabetics because it helps protect our kidneys, but she said, I don't need it anymore. So since I've started Monjaro, I have been off um, galimparide and lisinopril. So it's two medications down. I'm still on metformin and I am still on a statin for cholesterol, I'm optimistic that I will be weaned off the uh, cholesterol medications soon. Not sure about metformin, but I'm optimistic. Um, my goal is to have a blood draw this month because my company, in order to get a health incentive for our HSA, we need to have an annual physical, including blood work. And even though I have my blood work through my doctor, it's not necessarily the blood work that my company and insurance company require. So sometime in March, I will have that done and see where my A1C is at. So also I am gonna stay at the 10 milligram dose and my doctor even suggested going back down to 7.5, more or less one, she doesn't want me losing any more weight and two, because of the supply issues. Apparently a lot of her patients are having issues with um, with the supply of getting Manjaro, as many of you have been having issues as well. I took notes again. All right. Also, this week was kind of a big week for me because I saw my doctor and I also won a, um, a life coaching session at work. I won that in the fall and then I redeemed it this past week. And it was really enlightening and I learned a lot about myself in 45 minutes than I have in 45 years about myself. It was, um, it was good, it was very positive and uh, lets me know that yes, I'm on the right track where I am. It's helping me um, focus a bit more. So I really enjoyed that session and I didn't know what to expect with a life coach session and I was caught, honestly, I thought they were kind of hokey, but I just thought it was very worthwhile uh, time spent and I am going to follow up with with that life coach because um, I have some ideas noodling in my brain about my future and perhaps the future of these videos as well. So that was good. Also, I mentioned last week that I had a new headshot session, um, one so I can visualize my my new self. So I went to the photographer that I had luxury photos taken with for my 50th birthday. Luxury slash boudoir. Now boudoir photos have, or boudoir basically has different definitions for people. So this was my third session with this photographer. Her name is Melissa Robinson of Rebel Robinson Photography in Sarasota. And yes, I know she does use Photoshop, photo retouching, but, um, what she does is she she brings out how I feel inside to in, to a visual. Not that I'm I don't I mean I think I look fine without um, Photoshop and fancy makeup and all that. Although I am wearing a little more makeup today because I have an event in Naples later today. And when I go down to Naples, Florida, I always think I need to step it up a notch. Anyway. Um, I just really appreciate Melissa's work and I love working with her during these during these sessions and everything and I feel really good about myself. It's just a reminder of an amazing person that I am and um, all of her clients and stuff and I, I just think these sessions are very much empowerment. So what she does are called um, power shots and she schedule these, schedules these once a month and basically it's like a 90 minute session included in that session you can have hair and makeup done I opted to have hair and makeup done because it's different when someone else does that for you and then it's just really rapid fire of a couple outfits doing your headshots changing up their headshots so 
I am going to show you um, a photo that I did for my 20th birthday, or 20th birthday, I wish, <laughs> for my 50th birthday in 2020. It was a pandemic, I couldn't go anywhere, just like most of you. Florida was a little bit more liberal as to what we could do, so I could do this photo shoot with her. So this is a photo from uh, 2020, and then I did a session with her at the end of 2021. So you can see that photo, and then you could see a couple photos from my session just last week. And I just think these are amazing, and it's I just need that visual to to help me grasp that yes, this is me. This is me. I am that person in there. I'm that person inside and out as well. Okay, so that's it for that wrap up. Um, going back to the what's next. It's kind of odd. The last couple, well, the last couple months, last month, and then this morning, I've been receiving inquiries from like local media outlets to talk about traveling solo as a woman for solo travel girl and they've referenced my book now during the pandemic i published a book called a to z of a solo travel girl traits of women who travel alone not lonely and it wasn't my intention to publish that book as a print book i just wanted it just as a a digital book but things were weird in the pandemic um Things were weird where I was working, so I ended up doing that that book. And I mean, it, it's just a fun book. I actually wrote most of it, I think in 2017, part of a, um, it was a blog project, at the A to Z blogging in April, basically every day of the month in April, with the exception of Sundays, you write a blog post starting with A on the first day, and then April 2nd, it's a blog post about a B topic, and then a C, and then by the end, you've written 26 um, blog posts during the month of April. So I took these, and I put them all together, and then I added some other insight and tips about traveling solo. So anyway, so I have an article coming out in a magazine called eBella Magazine. It'll be the digital copy, and it's basically a, a a magazine for empowering women in Southwest Florida. It's digital so anyone can read it. I, when that link is ready, I will post that accordingly. And then a, um, a radio show reached out in the area so they'd like me to be a guest and talk about, talk about my book and traveling solo and the empowerment that um, you can get from traveling solo. So those are some exciting things coming up. What else do I have? My notes. Oh. So, also, so I had a question, you know, why wouldn't I stay on Monjaro if it is helping me? Well, two things. I'm in limbo, as most of you know, that I have a biopsy, biopsy coming up for this nodule on my thyroid. Now, when I met with my doctor, Dr. Madera, this past week, she had an ultrasound machine in there. I don't know why she didn't do this before, but um, she said that since... I've lost the weight, it's easier to feel the nodule, and I haven't felt around for the nodule, but she had an ultrasound there, she was showing her physician's assistant the actual nodule. And um, so I'm going to have that biopsy, I guess next week, next Tuesday, whenever March 15th is, that's when the, the biopsy will be. And I really hope it's just in and out because I have a lot of appointments scheduled that day. So yeah, so we'll just see what it is. And she said, well, it's probably non-cancerous, but if it is, we'll just deal with it. I'm like, okay, we'll just deal with it. So, you know, whether that's cancerous or not, that's going to determine my path, my future on Manjaro. Also the the cost, the copay. Um, if you watched last week's video, you know when I went to go pick up my three month supply, it was over 500 some dollars. So the pharmacist, he did some magic tricks and it was like $45 and change for one month supply. So I went looking onto my insurance yesterday and basically without the $25 savings card, which really isn't $25 anymore for me, um, it's gonna be what $245 and change a month for Manjaro. So yeah, that's gonna be something to think about. Um, again, I, I could, I could swing that, I guess. I mean, if it is the 550, that would be better than 245 
a month rather than the five, maybe it was like 578 for three months. That would be better, but I'll just have to make sure that my HSA is properly, properly supplied, making my deductions and making sure I'm taking care or taking advantage of the, um, the credits that my employer offers included in that are the incentives to have the blood work and then have the physical. So my creditor will, um, um, they provide, they provide those options, those incentives. Plus I did have a healthy rollover from last year. So we'll just see, we're just rolling with it, right? That's all you can do. Um, another question someone asked is, do, have I been experiencing hair loss with Manjaro? And that's a really interesting question. I think I've been having thinning hair for, I don't know, at least over a decade. I remember talking to my sister, asking her, what can I do to thicken my hair? My, my sister owns a hair salon and she recommended some hair strengthening shampoos and I never stuck with them. So I had COVID in November and as you know, hair loss is one of the side effects of that. But I've been noticing that um, the drain in my shower, I basically have to remove the hair out of it every day. So I guess there is hair loss happening. I don't know if it's from rapid weight loss. I don't know if it's from Manjaro. I don't know if it's from COVID. I don't know if it's just the aging process. So yeah, I guess there is some kind of hair loss going on. But I have noticed that my nails do feel stronger because um, I used to break my nails all the time. But since being on Manjaro, my nails do feel stronger. So I don't know if it's because of the Manjaro or if it's because maybe I'm eating better, but my nails have been stronger. So that's a good thing. Oh, <laughs> excuse me. With my doctor's appointment, I do have, um, once in a while I get a little stomach pain and I'm, I think whatever. And as long as I can remember, I've always had a pain in my lower right side, like ever since elementary school and doctors could never figure out what it was. So finally, a few years ago, I was diagnosed with IBS, which I always thought was like imaginary disease or illness, but it's real. So whenever I get stressed, I get this, this pain in my lower right side and um, upper stomach area in that. Um, it's not appendicitis because I had my appendix out a few years ago. So I know I don't need to worry about that. I had a hysterectomy um, and I think it was that ovary on that side was taken out. So I know it's not that. So anyway, so my doctor has ordered a um, an ultrasound for my gallbladder because she said with rapid weight loss, like what I've had, gallstones are an issue. So I will have a um, an ultrasound on that very soon. I'm not sure. Um, I am going to be called and an appointment will be scheduled. So hopefully I'll know soon to make sure that my gallbladder is okay. If anything, it'll be a starting point to make sure my gallbladder is all right. So I hope you're having success on your journey. Um, just remember that Yes, we're all on this Manjaro journey, but uh, our results are going to look a little bit different from each other, and that's okay. I mean, I know people are losing more weight than I have. They're getting their A1C lower than mine at a faster pace, and I'm totally okay with that. So don't get discouraged if um, you've been on Manjaro for what seems like forever, like maybe six or eight months or so, and you've only seen little weight loss. You know what? The slower you lose the weight, the better. You know, just consistency is key. Just keep on doing what you're doing. But perhaps, you know, maybe you need to um, hydrate more, look at what you're eating. I'm a strong believer in consulting with a nutritionist um, to help get you on the right path. But, um, you know, you're doing a good job as to what you're, what you're doing. S hang in there and do what's best for you. And remember, always reach out to your healthcare provider. And with that, I want to thank you for being here. Thank you for following along in, on this journey. I know many of you have been with me through this whole process, and I really do appreciate you. Um, I do appreciate your comments, and I know I'm slow to, to reply and respond to them, and I'm getting there. Really, I am. So thanks for, so much for watching today. I hope you have an awesome week. I hope you're having success, and just be safe and happy out there. And be kind. Bye-bye.